it is Saturday. Okay, this is Tuesday. Yeah, we're starting at 8.30 for the net security class. And, uh, yeah, I'm at home. I'm at home. It's Saturday, the 4th. And we talk about home learning. And I emphasize the point, we want to focus on learning and maybe um, to compensate for not being in the classroom, we can do a little less evaluations. And as long as, as, long as students are making a great effort, or a good effort, aside from their circumstances that they might be in, um, I don't think I'd hold them, I'd hold them pretty much um, safe with their midterm grade. Now, I, I'm not totally guaranteeing that, depends on situations, but... Uh, yeah, as long as a student makes a good effort, I, I'd find it hard to give them a lower grade than their midterm finishing out the uh, semester. So we're going to talk a little more about that on Monday with the classes. <clears throat> we have already talked about it with this group. All right, so we did our VPN work. We did a site-to-site -site VPN using uh, Cisco routers. We're working on ASA on Thursday. We talk maybe just a bit about it today. And we're going to learn a little bit about objects. And we covered that Thursday. We'll wrap it up next week. Today we did some extra work. Okay, kind of diverged. Made sure we did another uh, IP version 6 lab. Even though our students are, you know, pretty verse in IP6. Not extremely verse, but pretty good. It was good to redo that. And, um... We're slowly going to transition to using uh, Palo Alto, those three different courses in Palo Alto to finish out the term, and that transition will probably occur next week. Okay? And we can use their, um, their online to simulate, well, um, and do yeah, a little bit of simulations of uh, virtual, but uh, do some uh, a little more VPN work and do just firewall firewall work. We want to get some more of that in. Okay, <clears throat> so site to site VPN. We did the example. Uh, we have some cloud. We sent it through some untrusted cloud. The internet would be the key there, and we have our two devices on each end. We set those up. Um, I got. On Thursday, we did a demo um, from a browser. Well, actually, I downloaded a, cl a client. I actually downloaded and running it on Ubuntu, and I connected in the NIAC, and we took a look at, at that. And maybe down the road, you know, that would be a remote. So we have site-to-site -site and remote. And um, maybe down the road, we can look at uh, Jim, if he has time, Deegan at the college. Maybe he could... Um, do a little excerpt on us maybe right before we uh, finish up AWS <clears throat> we're going to use some of that st um, material in OS2 and we'll do a little bit for the security part of the capstone now so th we're using both Palo Alto AWS um, Acer and Google um, probably won't do those directly or IBM but at least we're getting some cloud experience All right, so uh, Cisco, we um, we already talked about the remote part. For example, if I had a remote, I could go to the cloud, connect in. We did a site-to-site, -site, router 3, router 1. We talked a little bit about interesting traffic, causing the app to... And we use access lists to identify the interesting traffic, which then got the tunnel going in terms of setup that ACLs they have to mirror and and we need to mirror the two sides when we make the connection now we used a pre-shared key okay we use internet key exchange in, but we use pre-shared key but we could have also used a public shared key to do that same problem um Maybe we could do one of those before we uh, end the, the term. So, 
Then, I think this was the lab. We set up a lab. We're going to use these. And um, we actually set it up for IP version 6. And then I, I talked about an example. Um, Mason City wants to connect to Cedar Falls. And this is back when we didn't have great... Um, WAN connections and one student on this project said, well, Design Lighting ought to move their offices to Clear Lake because they have better connections to connect to the other place. What they want to do is they want to manage your inventory in, here in Mason City so people here could, uh, or either place, could check the inventory and see exactly what people had. And then they could easily move the product, get the product moved between the sites without having to what they were doing is they were literally calling on the phone and trying to get a hold of somebody here. Here it is. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. The um, We used unique local addresses. Uh, I believe this is what they used. Slash 64 for IP6. You know, everybody would should do that. At least what I read. We also... Um, Extended um, uni is it extended uniform interface? Anyway, this is this is where it takes the MAC address, puts it in the interface. We'll talk a little bit about that. So they uh, they used this address left. You know these are all zeros, right? We got our one, two, three, four parts. So that's sixty four bits. These sixty four bits were just left for the uh, router to assign the address. <clears throat> and we did it on both ends, okay? And then um, we assigned, we assigned here, and then these routers, when they did that, then they assigned, they assigned the uh, link local address automatically, and since, since it was on the same interface, are you following me here? Since it's on the same interface, the interface number would be the same because they're right using this MAC address. So I looked it up, the MAC address on the interface was this, so what it does is it splits it, okay, um, it just splits it and then it separates these and it puts an NFFFE in the middle, okay, puts it right in the middle. It has to get to 64 bits, so here we're at 48 bits, need 64, so we add 16. Okay, you math wizards, yeah, you should be able to add that in your head. Then it takes the seventh bit and it inverts it. I'm not going to go totally into it, but it inverts. So if you took the seventh bit there and inverted it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so here's the seventh bit, okay, in this scenario, it would be a zero, so it inverted it, so it made it a one, which then made that hexadecimal number there a two. All right, if you need more on that, I can cover it later. Okay, so, right, we, uh, we then had um, connectivity between these. When they have all done, uh, they were still working on the switch. We might look a little bit at that on, um, we might look at that. On Monday, I mean Tuesday, we'll see. We'll see. Because we're going to leave this set up for the other class. They're using it as a demo. That worked out really well. I better keep moving. So, information. All right. It's now, I say that all the time, it's now uh, Thursday. And we uh, revisited here. We revisited Zoom, the Zoom sessions, and it's actually working really good. As soon as we get done recording on Zoom, Zoom is a good platform for video conferencing. It's a good platform for storage, and it is amazing how well, how well it's functioning with the huge increase in demand for the service. I mean, it's really amazing. So but what it's doing now... We um, pay for a Panopto service. Uh, Zoom, we've got, you know, so much storage in the cloud. Panopto, 
we have so much storage in the cloud, but it's way more. So, and then, because what we use Panopto for is pre-record. Okay, you can pre-record your information, put it in here, and then since it's in the cloud, okay, then people can get at it from anywhere. Yeah, there's a little service out there that does the same thing. Ah, it's supposed to be a joke. Okay, so then um, what happens now, Zoom automatically moves it to Panopto. I put it in a directory. And, I mean, Panopto does this. You can create one directory that these meetings all go into. In fact, Panopto does it. They call it a folder. Right? That's probably the term most people would use. And then what I can do is I change the permissions on the folder and just allow everybody to see them if they have the link. So now I can use one link and all the videos are there. And nowadays, people are savvy enough to go in and say, okay, I need a video from Tuesday. They just go down and look at the dates and the times, and they can pull up the part they want. And Panopto Viewer isn't too bad. You can make it full screen, and you can grab the bottom bar, and you can move stuff. You could, and here's what um, I know some students, my uh, daughter-in-law teaches some classes at the University of Iowa, and she said what the students do is they uh, double the speed. Because you can easily follow it at double the speed. You know, if you just kind of want to get a review of the information, just double the speed, okay? Like right now. I took a sip of my coffee. I'm in my living room, or our reading room, we call it. I can show you a picture of that sometime. But I got that nice sun shining on my back and sipping my coffee. And you might say, Mr. Dirksen, I can't believe you're wasting time on the video. And you can double the speed. ASA firewalls, yeah, we pretty much talked about that, and um, what the students are going to do is do the packet tracer for that. Um, I do not have the uh, ASA 5505s hooked up at the college. Um, they could have probably made that work before I left campus, but to do one lab, we're not going to worry about it now. Okay. So, yeah, I did a little review here of that uh, um, linked local address that needs to be on there. And that becomes the default gateway for PCs connected here. Yeah, IP6 is going to be, uh, in the big picture, way easier. Keep moving. So, we talked about the ASA. This is a basic review, but we have our outside uh, security level of zero, as an example. We have our inside security level of 100. And this is actually how ours works on campus. We have a DMZ1 with a security level of 50, a DMZ2 with a security level of 60. Um, this is where our work server is, in which students can access remotely. Um, right, so they can come in through the cloud and get to that work server. It's at our lower DMZ level. And it just happens to be sitting in a classroom, wouldn't have to be in there. All right, so that, you know, firewalls work. And we and then we talked a lot about um, traffic. Okay, so, you know, uh, this can go anywhere. Right, you know, because it's the highest number. You get it? This one could go here. Everything can go out because that's a zero. And then the only way to manage traffic, let's say some traffic here coming from the outside, is you'd have to allow it. And so we only allow traffic to the one work server and the one address. So I guess that's a good example. Talk about security level talk about policy. How do we decide what policies do we create there to let that in? We let a couple things in, okay, and you can do that through your access list. You know, we have network access. We can expect, have an inspection engine. Uh, inspection engines used a lot in this realm. You know, traffic heading out. We look at what kind of traffic it is. 
so we can let that traffic back in, especially if you're going to the big mean awful internet or the great wonderful beautiful internet or everything in between yeah it, this new generation firewalls and it really makes a lot of sense we, we, we can filter most anything you can you can inspect the traffic you can look at the traffic and decide what traffic's good or bad and then then we can tie it to um, artificial intelligence where it's going to adapt and change based on what's happening out here in the world for for traffic and all of a sudden say hey this traffic you can't let in anymore or um, even if we have a certain traffic coming out and we want to let it back in and then there's this whole idea of managing traffic east-west okay I don't know, would you go like this, east, west? And then traffic north, south. North, south is um, going out to, let's say, the Internet. East, west is within your own organization, and then you classify data, what data can move where. So it's this um, non-trust, managing privilege, um, levels in classifying data to decide what goes where by whom. Now on our ASA we have iOS where we did uh, integrated services routers. That's what we did already. We did a little bit of firewall work with that. And then the uh, ASA with Firepower that gives us this cloud capabilities and they have Firepower devices. The first bought that from Sourcefire, which built it out of Snort, which is an open open source intrusion detection system. And um, Cisco bought them, you know, X amount of dollars, but you usually pay extra for that. ASA 5505, um, use small businesses, okay, set up VLANs. Um, we can have a, AS, we can have a Firewall act as a router device, which I do most of the time. Or it could be a transparent, or what they call stealth mode, in which it's just a bump on the wire where it's going to look at the traffic transferring through. Yeah, a little bit more like a switch, maybe? Okay. Oh, we talk about licensing. you got to make sure you understand the licensing for your firewalls and how much traffic they can handle so you don't underbuy. <laughs> Because traffic going in and out of an organization is probably going to increase before it decreases. Just take our current example of everybody working from home. Okay, so two more slides. We uh, we talked about all the features a firewall can have. You know, it can do NAT in and out. We can set up a VPN. It can do. It can manage your um, network time protocol. It can do DHCP if you need to do that. Of course, as we move to IP6, this this will shrink. You know, having to use that. Um, but anyway, then we talked about inside. You can manage your storage, where things are going in your storage and so forth. <clears throat> a router a router can work as uh, identity management to where um, I think I showed that over here um, people try to come in from the outside it's going to check Active Directory and then say they allow or not allow the person in. Um, internally we talked about the same thing somebody uh, plugs into a port internally in your business, um, a guest, a visitor, or even one of your employees who's not supposed to be on a certain thing, you could use a radius server that syncs with your active directory and you can decide if that person is allowed or that device maybe is just by device, that device or person is allowed onto the network. So somebody doesn't bring in a rogue device and try to connect it on a port. And there's a lot of ways to secure that, which we've learned already in class. But they talk about ID management right here at the edge through your firewall. 
You can go high availability through your firewalls, have multiple firewalls connected, so when you come in, it finds the one that's available. So one's a failover and the other one's your active one to get into your internal network. Um, you can have a firewall uh, split up virtually and have different security contexts. You could have uh, one firewall look like three. So it's similar to um, virtual machines and then each one can carry its own security context for your traffic. You know, I talk about this all the time. Layers. Doing something like these things, identity, you know, identity, identity, uh, security, whatever. If you can stop traffic before it gets to your actual servers, it makes a lot of sense to check here whether somebody should be in or not before they actually get to the real servers. Okay? One more slide. We, whoa. Let me undo that. Undo that. Okay. I think I'm back. Okay, I'd be curious to see if it kept recording. For example, uh, work server um, two. You know, we just have an object name for that. Oh, let me go. I'm on the wrong page. Yeah. So, we talked about objects. And we'll finish up here. Sometimes configuring devices becomes more and more complex. So if you can organize things, for example, networks, you can give a name to a host address and just call it an object. Okay? And then you refer to that name in your configurations. Um, for example, um, work server 2. We'll see how this turns out. This could be crazy. Um, Work server 2, yeah, I'm still going here. Work server 2, um, we have, you know, a host name for that. So in the firewall, the ASA 5520, we can just refer to it by the name rather than constantly having to type in the IP address, okay? You can give a whole subnet and... Um, you know, one subnet with an address, or you can give a range of addresses. You can see how this would help access control list in terms of managing access control entries. We can create service objects in which um, they use a service and maybe a uh, exit port number like TCP www traffic. Okay, and then you can take these from above and group them object groups so you can create um, groups of objects together and then reference the groups uh, last time I read IP6 you couldn't nest objects here you know more or less you'd have a, a group object and then that would reference another group object so you'd have a group object and a group object okay but I'd have to research that and look it up Okay, so we talked a little bit about, here to wrap up, routers, the, AC, the ACLs. The entries look the same, but the list might be managed a little different than an ASA. Okay, that is it. Thanks for your patience if you listen to it all the way to the end. Take care of yourself.